From what I, I realized that if I want all my siblings, and my children to know each other, it's going to have to be my responsibility. And I make sure that they stay in contact with each other. And um, my kids, by my wife, haven't seen him since he was 11. And they were like two and you know, two and three at the time. So it was good seeing them. You know, they know who he is. They all look alike. <laughs> um, but he doesn't know his youngest sister. He never met her. And uh, so that kind of, you know, it hurts. But uh, he sees the pictures on Facebook. And, you know, we send each other pictures and stuff. And he say, you know, tell him I love him. And, you know, they tell him, you know, he loved him too. Um, but he just in a he's in a place of his own and you know I talked to his grandmother and she said you know he doesn't call me a lot and you know I tried to call him and get on him about that you know you know why you don't call your grandmother anymore and you know she said you know he just do his own thing he's busy you know and you know I understand yes, yes. but you do need to pick up the phone sometime and you know stay in touch I think about that quite often maybe like once a week. Um, I don't even have an answer for that. I have to put that one in God's hands. And uh, because that's gonna be a very tough situation. And I had to explain to them after I'm gone, you know, I would like for them to really get to know each other, you know, better and, you know, be a family because we're not we're not gonna be here forever and that's important to me that they do know oh, it is it's gratifying it's daunting in the sense that you know that they don't do what you say they do what you do and so while it feels great it's a tremendous responsibility to make sure that you not only talk the talk, but you walk the walk. And that you not shield them from trouble or difficult times or lack or any of the things that life thrusts upon us. You know, it's, it, it's, it's a daunting task. It's kind of scary. Yeah. yeah. To make sure that you make the right, and you don't always get it right. And then when you don't, you have to give that disclaimer. You know, well son, you know, at the time, it seemed like a great idea. But now that life has revealed itself a little more, it was not such a good idea. And this is why it was okay then and it's not okay now, or whatever. Yeah, so it's pretty, it's a challenge, it's daunting. Yeah, I think that was, you summed it up. But it's great, it's great to know that you're the most important people in your child's life because not every child feels that way. And unfortunately, there are parents that don't understand that or feel that way. And, and I say that because, um, again, like Anita said, you want to not just talk to talk, walk to walk, um, don't do as I... Is do, do as I say. Do, uh, yeah. Yeah. So, um, I, I think some parents uh, don't understand how important that is, and also for the child to know that you're human, that you make mistakes, that you don't, like Anita said, you don't always get it right, but to admit and to show uh, that um, to your, your child. So it's not just, it, it's important, but it's also kind of revealing, you know. Um, you reveal a lot about yourself when there's somebody else that is totally dependent on you. Um, and it is, it is a challenge and it's a daunting <laughs> responsibility. Sometimes it's a burden, you know, because I need, I need, I mommy, 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 mommy. Sometimes it's overwhelming. Um, that gets less and less, um, especially as they get older and they get a little bit more independent and they don't need you for every single thing. Um, 
but that's as it should be. We are the caretaker, we are the provider, we are the parent, and we parent. So. Uh, keeping her alive was a big thing, and I knew it was, I guess maybe I saw it like that, like every day, just like, did she die today? No? Okay, good. Even when things were, were kind of rough, you know, like on certain days, and she would come home from school and have a meltdown or whatever was going wrong, or she was failing this or whatever, and um, it was just like, did she die today? No? Okay, that's good. And that's, you know, that's, that's like primary goal of a parent is like, kid is alive. Okay, that's good. Um, uh, yeah, and, and it's funny, like later on, she, she, you know, when they're kids, they have little personalities and then they become bigger kids and then like many adults with, with real, like fully fleshed out personalities and, um, you know, she was trying to be a, she was trying to write stories and stuff, and I, you can see like this little artistic streak in her. And her mom, her mom paints and stuff too, so I'm not exactly saying that it's all coming from me, but you know, she's she's going into and in, into acting and building sets and stuff at this little high school, and I've taken her on to shoots and and she's helped with the podcast, like live events and stuff, just like being a little PA. Uh, so you can see you can see that influence from me coming, um, and it's pretty cool. And again, it's a little terrifying because I know how tough the industry is, and that, that's that's scary as a parent. Um, so maybe I'm leading her astray in that sense. But, uh, but it's been it's been kind of cool to see that she's been going that way. Maybe because of me, you know, it's hard to say, but it's yeah, it's pretty nice. and they're watching everything and it makes you when you I think if you're trying to be the right person it and I'm I've always even when I was little yes I cut up and I did what kids do teenagers do all of that but at my core I never wanted my parents to be ashamed of me I never wanted to do anything that God would want me to do. And my mantra when I die is to hear God say, well done, my good and faithful servant. So with that as my guide, I try to instill that in, the, in, in our children. But I also try to let them know, mommy loves you. Mommy one loves you, I'm mommy two. So mommy two loves you, mommy one loves you. But if anything happens to us, know that we're not gone. We're still right there with you and you can handle it because we're pouring into you so that you can handle it. So yes, you want me to be there and all of that. But if for whatever reason God calls me home, just know that you can handle it and know that I'm still got your back. I'm still right there with you. And it doesn't matter who you dub as important in your life. There's nothing and no one more important than God. Not even me. You know, and that's what I I try to try to give them. Because it is very it's, it's huge. And I do not Take it for granted. It's huge. I think there's a lot of pressure in knowing that too, right? Like it's a great thing to feel like you can inspire someone and that you can guide someone. Because growing up, I didn't feel like I had that north star, that guiding light. Um, my mother um, is disabled, so she is legally blind, and she's been legally blind since she was 15. Um, I think, and, and not to put that in a negative light, I think she, she did have that victim mentality because of that. And I think in, in living with her, I, I started to develop that victim mentality because that's what I knew and grew up with. And I started to realize that I can make my own way and I can start shaping the way I view the world. And so I didn't feel like I really had that, guy, that positive guiding light. I did have an aunt that I really was 
inspired by and I lost her unfortunately at 15 years old. So that was very difficult because I think that was the one person that I felt like I had that. And she gave me a glimpse of what it could be like to be that kind of a mother. Um, so I think it is, it's stressful a little bit to know that you have such weight, but you have to realize that it's all about the values that you live in your life and you hope that your children, that's a strong foundation for them to make choices. I think it's been difficult to know that we can't, we don't own our children and we can't force them to be the kind of people we want them to be. We can only hope that they see our example, uh, our example and, and are able to live a, a prosperous life. Like that's how I kind of see it. It is, like I said, stressful to know that, but it's such a huge opportunity to bring change in the world too, um, one child at a time. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't really think about, or, or I didn't think about that as being a parent, and you know, just hearing it makes it puts a lot of pressure on you to to be an example for your child, and uh, it's it's it is scary in a way because every action you take molds and shapes them and we want we only want the best for them so we have to watch uh, the things that we do uh, so it doesn't negatively impact them and make them you know uh, not being contributors of society or just you know just being a bad person in general we don't we don't want that for them